everyone and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, two people filed Monday morning for places on the May 2nd Sulphur Springs City Council election ballot. Justin M. Brown filed at 9.15 a.m. Monday as a candidate for place one on the city council. At 9.50 a.m. Monday, J. W. Julian also filed as a candidate for place one on the city council. So far, place one is the only place in which a contested race has developed. Five other places are up for election. Places one, two, three, and five are for the unexpired terms of council members who resigned in December. Places 6 and 7 were regularly slated to be on the May 2nd ballot, and both are for full terms on the council. Additional candidates for the May 2nd election so far include Place 2, Harold Nash Sr., Place 3, Oscar Aguilar, Place 5, Ricardo Chavaria, Place 6, Doug Moore, and Place 7, John Sellers. Candidate filing will continue from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. weekdays through February 14th at City Hall. And residents that are interested should see City Secretary Gail Roberts for an application packet. A 23-year-old Savoy man died Sunday evening as the result of a motorcycle crash on Interstate 30 west at mile marker 125 in Hopkins County. The call was dispatched at 6.19 p.m. Sunday as a one-vehicle motorcycle crash. The crash is still being investigated but the initial investigation by Sulphur Springs Police indicated the Savoy man was traveling west on I-30 on his bike with a group of motorcyclists over the Bill Bradford Road overpass. The motorcyclist was in the left lane coming off the bridge when he apparently lost control of the bike, causing it to crash, according to Sulphur Springs Police Chief Jason Ricketson. The man, who was reported not to have been wearing a helmet, was transported to Christus Mother Francis Hospital, Sulphur Springs, for treatment of serious injuries. He died later Sunday at the hospital. He has been identified uh, as of Monday afternoon as Andrew Taylor Glass. Precinct 1 JP B.J. Tier said an autopsy has been ordered, as is a standard procedure in crashes resulting in death. A 31-year-old Arlington man was jailed Saturday morning after troopers found more than three dozen vacuum-sealed bags of marijuana and a water bottle filled with suspected liquid cocaine. Texas Department of Public Safety reported stopping a Toyota car on I-30 near mile marker 129 at 8.21 a.m. Saturday for a traffic violation. The passenger reportedly told the trooper that he had hired a Lyft driver to transport him from Arlington to Little Rock, Arkansas. When asked if he had brought any luggage with him, the man allegedly uh, told the trooper that he did not. The Lyft driver, however, allegedly told the trooper the passenger had placed two large bags of luggage in the trunk when he was picked up. When asked about the luggage discrepancy, the man allegedly admitted there was marijuana in the car's trunk. A probable cause search yielded two bags containing a total of 38 vacuum seal bags of suspected marijuana, which weighed a total of 44 pounds. A water bottle containing a uh, purple liquid suspected to be liquid cocaine was found as well. Consequently, Dallas Quincy Jackson was arrested for possession of five pounds or more, but less than 50 pounds of marijuana and possession of 28 grams or more, but less than 400 grams of a controlled substance. The Hopkins County Sheriff's Office is pursuing grant funding, which would allow the department to increase the department by one patrol deputy each shift. Hopkins County Sheriff's Office Chief Deputy uh, Tanner Crump 
talked with the Hopkins County Commissioner's Court during a recent work session about potentially applying for a three-year COPS grant for up to $125,000 to increase uh, patrol and CID staffing to keep up with population increases over the last decade and anticipated uh, in uh, for the future. In order to apply for the grant, uh, Crump said that he'd need to hire a grant writer at a cost of about $750 to complete the application by the March deadline. County Judge Robert Newsom uh, told uh, Crump to move forward with the application. If uh, uh, Hopkins County Sheriff's Office doesn't receive the grant, or if the county isn't able to afford its part of the additional cost, the county wouldn't have to proceed with it. Local residents who want to uh, raise funds for the county's volunteer fire departments can do so while tidying up a bit around their homes, according to the Hopkins County Commissioners. Precincts 2, 3, and 4 uh, accept at their respective precinct barns scrap metal, and all the funds raised from cashing in that scrap metal uh, will be divided evenly among the volunteer fire departments in the county. Uh, Precinct 4 Commissioner Joe Price said a total of $9,604 was raised over the last year from cashing in scrap metal. Precinct 2 and 3 barns will be open from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. Monday through Friday and Precinct 4 from 7.30 a.m. until 3 p.m. to accept uh, metal items only. Uh, county uh, scrap metal donations uh, won't be accepted at the Precinct 1 barn, but residents may take scrap metal to the other Precinct barns to benefit the volunteer fire departments. Precinct 1 uh, Commissioner Mickey Barker said that he would donate any metal collected out of ditches to the other uh, commissioners to benefit the volunteer fire departments. The Hopkins County Healthcare Foundation's successful fundraising year was celebrated on Saturday with a Mardi Gras party, uh, Hopkins County style. The uh, gala transformed the uh, Civic Center for an evening of fun, food, and fellowship. Excitement was high as couples entered the foyer to the music of a jazz band. Meredith Cadell, the CEO of the hospital's uh, Healthcare Foundation, introduced the gala chairs, David and Pam Black, whose leadership during 2019 brought a successful year of fundraising for hospital needs. Also recognized for exceptional service was Roger and Dee Elliott, who led in support of the hospital since moving to Sulphur Springs. Dinner, dancing, silent and live auctions, and games of chance made it quite an evening for gala uh, attendees. In sports, the number 13 ranked Saltillo Lady Lions basketball team remained unbeaten in district play, defeating Avery on the road 56 to 25 on Friday. The Lady Lions outscored Avery in every quarter. The Lady Lions are now 6 and 0 in district play and 24 and 7 for the season. For the uh, Lady Lions, Anna Reeder had 19 points. Jocelyn Ochoa scored nine points. Brittany Peoples had six points. Chandler Bain scored five points. Uh, Paisley Kastner, uh, Maddie Smith, and Christina Wade all scored four points. Juliana Giles had three points, and Allie Lane added two points. Lady Lions head coach Bill Giles said after a slow start, the Lady Lions uh, really did a good job of getting after it defensively. He said that led directly into the uh, Lady Lions getting it going on the offensive end. Coach Giles said his team had good effort and intensity. The Lady Lions play next at home against Union Hill on Tuesday evening. And that's Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for watching and so long, everybody. I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting community players. Um, we hope you all have a wonderful time. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the silent auctions. If you notice the centerpieces on each of your tables, 
those are the silent auction baskets that we will be auctioning off tonight. The bid sheets are in the middle. Um, there is a list with each one. <laughs> yeah, you can see them. There's a bid sheet on the center table um, for each of the baskets. If you know, some of them come with uh, tickets to some of the shows. And uh, those baskets are themed around the shows for the 2020 season. We have Death by Chocolate, which will be the last weekend of February, beginning of March. We have a youth production that is Brothers Grimm and Law and Order Fairy Tale Unit. That's going to be in March and April. And I just want to let y'all know we had 47 youth come and audition for that production. So um, we appreciate everyone supporting us so that, that we have a place for these young folks to express their talents and learn more about their craft and just share those with the community. Um, in May, we'll be doing a show of Barbecuing Hamlet. And uh, with one of the shows for Barbecuing Hamlet, we will have a patron appreciation night. Um, we will do a dinner before one of the shows. Um, that And the patrons are on the center table, the giving levels, so if you give those levels, you will be invited to our patron appreciation dinner with that show. Invitations will be sent out later. Our summer youth workshop, we haven't decided the title of that, and if you'll notice in the far back corner, the basket for that is a mystery basket, because it's still a mystery to us as to what the show's going to be. <laughs> um, in September, we'll do Twisted Tales of Poe, and Let's see, October we will do Sleepy Hollow, and that will be a musical. Oh, and I want to show you, we had a wonderful person doing some paintings for some of our shows. Um, Y'all can look at that and enjoy that artwork. We're very appreciative of that. Um, and then we are also, <laughs> we are also hoping to do uh, a Christmas carol again in December. Uh, the big musical Christmas Carol at the auditorium. Uh, so be looking forward to that. We hope to get funding for that by April. Um, so any of you big donors, if you want to help us underwrite that show, <laughs> we will gladly accept. Um, I hope all of you have fun. Oh, let me tell you about the grab bags. These grab bags, for a $10 donation, you draw the number out of the bowl, off your chocolate, and you get the bag corresponding to that number. Each bag has at least a $10 value. Um, so it's kind of a gamble of what you might get. There are no gag gifts, I promise. <laughs> um, but that's just a fun little game to uh, help us raise some money. Uh, we really appreciate everyone being here. Uh, in just a few minutes, we're going to have our youth perform a couple of skits for you. And thank you to our live music as they play, as we eat. And everyone, I hope you all enjoy yourself. Oh, and I guess I should have introduced myself. I'm Lindy Mansfield. <laughs> I'm president of Community Players. Yes. Um, we are so glad to have you here. Thank you for coming. Our skip drum class is you today. That's today? Yes. Miss Gabami, we're ready. No, we're not ready. We don't have set. We don't have script. We don't have costumes. We uh, don't, don't worry about all of that. I took care of everything. All you have to do is sit here and say, you look down in the dumps. May I help you? Then what? Don't worry. The rest will work itself out. But I don't Just want to. do it. <clears throat> Yes. I wasn't always a bummer. 
once I was handsome, like you, and then he came into my life. We were married. You're 12? Go with it. Happy. <laughs> Until one night, there came a knock at the door. A stranger appeared, and I told her to make my home her home, and that was the beginning of the end. One night when I returned home from work, you don't have a job. I found the usual note. The beast had stolen my husband away, and the search began. I followed them all over the world. New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Paris, France, Texas. <laughs> I finally caught up with them at Niagara Falls. The beast and my handsome husband. I never mentioned a name, because whenever I do, I am possessed by lust to kill. Everything turns black in front of me. That's why I never mentioned a name. But it's the same as George Washington's wife. What, Martha? Martha. That's it, Martha. <laughs> Slowly I turned, step by step. Inch by inch, I crept up on the girl who had ruined my life. I looked around for a rock. I found one and I left. <laughs> single noise. No finger licking. Can you do that? Yeah. <coughs> How are you staring at me? <laughs> Makes me uncomfortable. It's a freaking donut. Brownie. <laughs> just, just eat it. I can't do it unless you look the other way. 
Are you serious? Yeah. The way you look at me is making me self-conscious. You're a real pain in my bum. Just look the other way, and I think I can do it. You think? Fine. Well, hurry it up, fat man. Stop that. You might have a sore neck by the time you do it. Shh. <laughs> you're breaking my concentration. <laughs> you see? I told you you couldn't do it. I was clearing my throat. I was clearing my throat. That's a lie. You liar. That's the noise you make every time. I told you you couldn't do it. All right, fine. Can a man just eat his food with the way he likes to eat it? <laughs> yeah. So why'd you put me through all of this? Uh, I was just messing with you, mate. <laughs> I can prove to you that I can, uh, not eat noisily. No, you can't. Couldn't do it for any amount of money. Fifty bucks, as I can. You couldn't do it for a hundred. You fat slob. No, I can prove to you I can eat like a gentleman. Fine. But not over a brownie. What then? Soup. <laughs> soup? Where are we going to get soup? Well, we'll just um, we'll take, a, take a ride down to the diner and we'll get soup. And if you slurp that soup one time, I get a hundred dollars. But everybody slurps their soup. Well, that's the challenge of it. Accept it or deny it. All right, all right. I'll take your deal. You got the hundred on you. Might as well give it to me now. There's no way you could eat it without slurping it. I won't prove your smiling face wrong. Oh, yeah? Do it then. Let's go. All right. <laughs> today? Mm -hmm. oh, no. Says me street, says me street, says me street. Um, do you want to get to work? Fine. Do you not want to find your son? Oh, my son. <laughs> You're psycho. <laughs> no, I'm not. <gasps> what about this? A swimsuit magazine? A swimsuit magazine. What are you doing? This, this was my dream. What are you talking about? I don't want to do this anymore. What? I don't want to be a detective. I want to be a swimsuit model. <laughs> You're crazy. But it's my dream to be a bathing beauty on the beach. Snap out of it! And they think I'm crazy. Oh. You're a wonderful detective. You can find my son. You're right. I'm built to be a swimsuit model. I quit. That's not what I meant. But okay. Okay, victorious. <laughs> but what about my kid? Oh, any other detective would be better than him. What? Nothing. Okay. I should just find my daughter alone. Daughter? And see. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about one of us who's afraid of a bully or an actual chicken? 
<laughs> An actual bird brain. So you. <laughs> <laughs>
I think it's the second one. <laughs> but I don't really know anymore. You know, you should really figure this out before you start asking me questions. It's not a question. It's a classic joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? You mean, for what purpose did the Gallus Gallus Domesticus traverse the asphalt <laughs> highway? Exactly. Why? To get to the other side. You mean to reach the ethereal plane? No! <laughs> you mean to reach the just-posed position from which they began? No, no, no! Well, we're going to tell a joke. 